Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Arissa of Arissa Root Art. And today we are actually going to resin a piece of art that I created. It's a 15 by 30 inch gallery wrapped canvas that I did a swipe on. It's not on my YouTube yet, but I'll end up posting the creation video as well as this resin video on the same day or the day, one day um, and then the next day so you guys can see the piece from start to finish. Um, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do that, but first I'm gonna show you the supplies I use. I do have um, I'm on part I'm on Julie Cuts pouring your heart out Facebook page, and I do often get asked what kind of resin I use, and so I actually prefer Pro Marine tabletop resin. For the volume you get, it is the least expensive I've seen, and it always dried crystal clear for me. I've never had a problem working with it. It's your standard one to one ratio. Um, I absolutely love this product. I prop, I will keep using this product. I haven't seen anything else. It's it's um, rated as food safe, but I don't I um, I don't necessarily agree with anyone ever cutting on resin because you know resin will scratch. But it is food grade. Um, it's food safe. It's not so heat resistant. It's not heat resistant. It's only heat resistant up to about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can't put hot. Um, pots or anything on it but you know I use it for coasters and everything like that and that's absolutely fine like I said it's a one-to-one -one ratio which is important to know because when you measure you measure resin resin you want to measure it by volume and not by um, weight to begin with but I am a math person and I love math and I don't like volume <laughs> mostly because I don't always have clear glasses and so I, when I'm measuring, measuring by volume, it gets a little complicated because you can't see through the glasses. So I'm gonna mix my resin in with, for you today, but I'm gonna first show you how I can measure the um, resin. So I'm gonna get you down so you can see what I've started with here. All right, so this is typically how you would measure by volume. And that is to show you that something behind me fell. Show you that if you look at this, the resin and the hardener are at the exact same level by volume. Now that is an absolutely accurate way to measure this and that is the standard way to measure resin. But I actually like to measure by weight if possible. So what I'll do is you'll take the cup that you use and you'll zero it out, zero it out on your scale and what I do is, I know these cups, they are 16 grams. So now I'll take my epoxy resin because it is thicker and it's easy, it's easy to measure the epoxy hardener because you see it's more, it's a looser, less, there's less viscosity to that. And so I'll measure that out. And this is 189 grams. And this one is 154 gra 53 grams. So the way I figure that out here, I'll take my calculator and I'll do a math. So what I do is I said this one was 154 grams. So I'll take 154 and I'll divide it by 189. And you get 0 0.814. So that is approximately 81%. So in the future, I write that on my epoxy resin that the 189 divided by 81% equals the amount you need for B. And I know that's confusing, but that means that no matter how much volume I put in of the epoxy in, if I take 81% of that, that's the volume I need for the hardener. And I'll show you how that works right now. So I'm gonna take an undisclosed, because I don't know, amount of resin, because I don't have enough in these cups to resin that piece, and I'm just gonna pour. And it doesn't matter how much I pour, but I'm pouring more. And so in order for me to do your typical ratio of uh, ordering, 
measuring that, I'd have to pull the hard, pour the hardener up to that level, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to measure the resin now, and I have 248 grams. If I divide that or multiply that by 0 0.81, which is 81%, I should get the amount of hardener I need to have. So I do, math, do the math, so I have 248 times 0 0.81 equals 200.88. So I'm gonna round that up to 201. And that means that in this one, I need to pour this number up to 201. And you always do the hardener second because you have a lot more wiggle room and you can pour slowly with the hardener. So if, as I get up to 200, I'm gonna slow down, make sure I don't pour too much. But the, with the hardener, if you do pour too much, you can always easily pour it back into the bottle. That's the forgiveness of the thinner viscosity of the hardener. So I'm gonna get up to that point. Because your resin is always going to weigh a bit more than the hardener because it's so dense, it's so thick. And so when I'm doing a large volume of resining, um, like when I'm making coasters or something, I, I will always measure my weight just because it's faster. So 201. Always put your cap back on your product. Don't leave them open. You don't want dust in them. And so you'll see, measuring by weight, when you figure out the ratio, gives you this exact volume you need. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and get your ca you, the camera back on the tripod and then I'll show you mixing my resume. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I am back. Always get your electronics out of the way. I say that because <laughs> at one point, a, a couple of months ago, not even too long ago, I was working with a very large volume of resin doing a table and I wore my watch and I got mixed resin on my watch, which I thought I could clean off. However, it got into the crown here, the little turner. And while I did clean it off well enough, it wasn't freely moving anymore and it kind of ruined my watch. So that sucks. So I had to replace that. So. If you are new to resin or if you're working with such a large volume of resin as to possibly get it on your electronics, just take them off. Keep your phone out of the way. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 once it cures, it's not going to move. Um, and so you can't, you, you ruin your stuff. All right, so when you're pouring your resin parts into a cup, make sure you have something with a good edge to it so you can scrape the edges. I love using these silicone um, stirrers. Now, you, I don't know if you can see, I have resin on here. There's chips of resin on here. As long as you don't disrupt them or start peeling them, you shouldn't, they shouldn't break off into your piece. If I were to break this off and it couldn't get it off completely, you don't wanna use that because you'll have little bits of hard resin in your piece. And then in that case, you just wanna use a popsicle stick. Um, but so you're gonna go ahead and scrape all down the sides of the cup and make sure you want to get all the resin you can out of that cup because you wanna maintain the ratio of one to one. So if I were to just do that and not scrape it, I have that much resin in this cup and so I'm changing the ratio and your product may not cure well enough. And so even, like I said, you don't wanna scrape it if you have resin. So I'm doing a very gentle scraping down this silicone spatula, just so I don't disrupt any of the resin on the spatula. Ideally, you wanna clean it off completely, but sometimes resin is hard to come off, um, come off, uh, pick off because it comes off in little pieces and it's frustrating and it's long. And so I just adjust to it. So a little bit more. I like also Promarine because as long as it's not hot, um, if, you, if you heat up your resin, your resin will mix, mix much faster. 
and it will have far fewer bubbles, but it does decrease the working time of your resin before it starts to stiffen up and become unworkable. So I have mine at room temperature all the time. It takes a little more elbow grease to mix the resin products, but um, you get a longer working time. So I have about 45 minutes, which won't take, I won't take 45 minutes at all to do this piece, but I love having the more working time because if you are doing coasters, then you have, or a lot of little pieces, you have a lot more time to work with the resin. I'm sitting here talking. This is why I'm not pouring this in because as soon as these touch, the chemical reaction does start. So don't mix your two components until you're absolutely ready to mix it, to stir it together, and also until you're ready to put it on your piece because that's when the clock starts. As soon as they touch, the reaction starts and they're going to, to want to harden up. Um, with each other Now again, I'm not heating my resin when you do heat resin. It does throw off a lot more fumes And so if you're work my my art room is fairly big. I think it's 22 by 16 or something like that. So it's fairly big So I'm not worried about working in a smaller space when I'm doing this if I am working in one of the other rooms in my house one of the smaller rooms and I'm heating up my resin I will use a respirator um this is a, an R95 mask and it just decreases the fumes because this stuff is toxic. And I've felt it before when I resin at night. If I have not used that and I'm just in a hurry and I'm heating the resin, the next morning I wake up and my, my throat is a bit sore. So I do make sure that I don't get the fumes. So when I do, um, when you mix resin, you wanna do it for at least three minutes, three to five minutes is ideal. Um, I do it for three minutes and I never have a problem, but I'm pretty vigorous in my mixing because I'm spreading it thin. It's going to be easier for me to get the bubbles out. If you're spreading a thick coat of anything, you wanna mix it slowly so the bubbles, um, you get far, fewer bubbles because it's gonna be more difficult to get all those bubbles out. You do wanna use gloves. Once this gets on your hands, it's a pain to get off of your hands. I have 99% alcohol near. Um, just in case I need to get it off or something. So I am going to just mix this for the three minutes. And I'm not going to talk because I'm going to spend, speed this video part of the video up. Okay, so my resin is all mixed. So you can see there's a lot of bubbles in there, but I'm not really worried about that. I will definitely um, get those get rid of those bubbles with my torch. Another option um, as far as measuring that you can do for the resin pieces are these measuring right cups that you get from Lowe's. There's a better kind that you can get from Home Depot, but the one I have is all dirty, so I wasn't gonna show it. But on Home Depot's, they will definitely, they'll have just actual ratios. So you can do a one-to-one -one ratio and they'll show you that. But it's the same thing. I've used this um, measure right cup from Lowe's before. And so you can just put in 12 ounces and put in 24 ounces. Again, put your resin in first. Um, you can go by milliliter too. Put your resin in first because it's the thicker of the two and it's less forgiving. And um, it's also heavier so it'll sink down where you don't typically want to take out but if you put in too much of the hardener it's still on top of the resin so technically you could scoop some off i wouldn't suggest putting it back in the bottle just because it's been in the same container as the resin and you don't know if chemically any of that resin got into that hardener and so it would be a loss but if you put the resin in first and it's heavier 
you can slowly pull up to the pour up to the same the correct volume with the hardener because it's thinner so that is another option and these are super easy to clean out once the resin is um, completely cured in them if you push down on the bottom you can peel the hardened resin out of these really easily I do like those so now um, I have my torch handy I have my heat gun handy because you're gonna need both of these the heat gun is for thinning out the resin enough for moving it along the canvas where the torch is um, gonna use for popping bubbles bubbles the torch is a lot hotter so you don't want to use that to heat your resin to move it because you'll just burn your resin in that case. So you use your torch to move it. Um, these gallery wrap canvases are, let me find one so I can show you the difference here. This is one that I've painted over because I'm going to do something else with it. But you'll see they, they, are, they sink. And so if you put something hard on it, it's going to tend to pull it to the center when you're doing a piece this big. So you want to adjust for that. This is a 12, uh, 15 by 30. So they have wood on the back, but the inlet here where it doesn't, they have a blank spot. So what I do is with these push pins on, I create a surface. So these are two 10 by 10 gallery wrap canvases still in the plastic. Don't use canvases that are open because then you'll get resin, potentially get resin on the canvas. And what I've used is um, for the backs of my coasters, I put cork on them and these are just sticky pieces of cork. So each one of these has, I believe, six pieces of cork, five pieces of cork. And so what that does is it shores up the underside. So when the resin hits the canvas, it doesn't sink to the middle as much. And so I put it right there. And so it has just a little give, but not as much as it would. I don't want it to have it um, so flat because you also don't want the doming effect in the center where your resin's just pouring all to the edge. I did this piece, um, I think two weeks ago. I don't always wait this long to do resin, but I've just been busy so I didn't get to it. But I have to, uh, taken a wet cloth and clean the surface just to make sure there's no dust on it. I did that before I mixed my re resin just because I want to make sure it's also all dry. So I'm going to get started pouring the resin. So all I do here is I pour it right in the center and I do resin my edges. I don't pour the entire volume that I've mixed in just because I like to have some extra. I have my lowly Veffy mat underneath. And again, these are <laughs> parts of my work after we wrap instruments for sterilizing. We sterilize the instruments in these blue wraps, which are great. They're 36 by 36. And then once before we're gonna use the instruments, we unwrap them and throw them away. Well, I collect them. So these have been used, but they've never touched the patient. So they're sterile. <laughs> and so I collect them and just use them. So after I pour a nice puddle in there, I do use my heat gun to heat it. I like to just use my hands to move my resin. The initial time I use my heat gun, I'll use, I'm right-handed, so I'll use my right hand to heat it. Afterwards, I'm gonna only use my left hand because I'm gonna use my right hand to spread. And it, you know, I have gotten resin on this. It does make the button stick sometimes, so I want to avoid that. Um, so I just use my right hand to spread it. Make sure your gloves don't have fluff on them. Make sure they're clean. Um, because you don't want to put anything in your resin. So I'm going to heat it initially with my right hand and go from there. So you're only heating it so you can spread it more. So now I'm just gonna spread. It is self-leveling. I don't try to go over the edges immediately because I don't want to run out and the edges take so little as compared to the actual surface. So I want to make sure I retain enough. Right here it's trying to go over the edge so I'm just going to do that part. I did, oh and I didn't show you, I'm so sorry. I did make sure this canvas is level um, both side to side and up and down because you don't want your canvas to be unlevel because again, 
it's the resin is self-leveling so it will run off one edge if there is a downhill potential so make sure your canvas is truly level and I did um, you do it before you do it um, without those things underneath also make sure it's level with the stabilizer pieces underneath all right, you really want to make sure you get your edges. If your resin is going to pull away from anywhere, it's going to be your edges. I don't have any oil in this piece at all, so I, I don't worry about it pitting because oil does um, repel the resin. And so once I've got the middle, you see I still have a lot in the middle here. Then I use that to get my sides. You can feel the difference between a resin side and another side. So I do avoid leaning over the piece if I can because I don't want any dust or any lint or anything on me falling in this resin. So as much as I can, I avoid leaning over the piece. I um, My hair doesn't fall out very often, but if... You do have hair that tends to shed. Put your hair away before you put your resin on. So tie it up tightly, put a hat on, whatever you have to do to make sure that you don't have a hair in your resin because that's so disappointing when you think you're gonna open, um, uncover it the next day to a beautiful shine and you've got a hair stuck in hard resin. Um, the only way to fix that is to sand a good amount down and go again. So this is why I retain some because I'm, I'm running low. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit more on the side. Heat that. And that way I have more to pull from, pull from to complete my sides. And you don't wanna to try to have a thick layer on your sides because it's going to drip unevenly. Your sides are just, you want to get a coat on it, but you don't want to try to um, build up that coat because it will drip and it's, it's going to go with gravity. Gravity wins all the time, <laughs> all the time. So I see there's a little bit of a rejected spot right there. So I just rub it in and then do a final rub on the center, on the edges, especially the edges I can't see. Make sure that they feel completely covered. Make sure that um, if you see ridges building, flatten them out. All right, and then you want to get down. You always want to look at your resin from the resin level. Always, always, always. So I wouldn't have seen there's a blank spot right there if I didn't get down and look at it at this level. I do one final heating of this just to make sure that the um, resin is self is leveled it will self level it will self level better if you heat it so always make sure it's heated before and again heat with the heat gun pop bubbles with the torch because you move your torch very quickly Now, I also heat my sides. I don't want to have sides that are ridged because I only heat at the, the top because you want your sides to self-level too. Remember, I don't like pulling things over, but if I'm gonna have to pull my heat gun over, make sure you hold your cord far away. And so I know, I just saw something fall right into this resin right here from my heat gun. Um, I wish I would have known better when I got this. I've had this one for two and a half years or so now. I wouldn't have allowed debris to stay on this heat gun, but I have, and it's working still, and I'm fairly cheap, so I'm not gonna buy another one, I'll adjust. So heat your sides to
So now is when you want to inspect your piece. I know that I am probably not going to put too much more resin on this piece. So I can get rid of the glove that I'm using to put the resin on. So I didn't like that edge. It looked like it was a little sparse. So I'm going to put a little bit on there and then heat it. Make sure you heat it if you add. So then you want to get down um, to the resin level. If I want to take off this glove and possibly put it back on, make sure you clean it. You can clean it with a towel saturated with the alcohol. That'll help to decrease the stickiness of it all. So I just put alcohol on this glove, clean, and I'm gonna clean off the stickiness, and then take off the glove. You don't want to put alcohol um, on your piece. I don't know what will happen. I've never done it, so I'm just gonna prevent it because I like this piece and I don't want it ruined. So I'm, I took my gloves off. Um, I took the resin off my gloves, and I'm just gonna take my gloves off, so I can now inspect the piece for fluffs or anything that is in that resin that you don't want to stay in the resin. So I use my X-Acto knife. It's a nice tip. And I think I saw something right there. So I'm just gonna get that out. Brace yourself if you can, just so you're not leaning too far over um, or touching your resin at all. Again, resin level, and I see something right here that I don't want. And so there was a big, a chunk. It may have been from that spatula. I may have um, dislodged a little bit of the hardened resin, resin in this piece. So there's a little hair there. Now, it gets hard. Those were really obvious, but you also do have bubbles in here. So pop your bubbles um, prior to finishing the inspection. A little piece of hair or something right there. So, got my torch. Very quickly. Go over it. Once you disrupt it, use your heat gun. Just make sure it does take a while, but that's the beauty of this pro this pro marine um, pro marine epoxy resin because you do have such a long working time. You don't worry about the drips on the bottom of the piece. This piece is still taped on that back side and so any drips I will be able to move remove when I remove the tape tomorrow morning so again just don't want big lint in your piece and just do take the time um, I have had pieces where I truly thought I was done and I walked away and I came back after it was cured and I wish that would have paid a little more attention. Um, so after you do the initial bubble popping, you want to go back and pop some more because there's layers to this. This is not so shallow that I feel like I'm going to get all the bubbles at the first pass with the torch. So after I'm done with that, torch again. And you can see the, the bubbles popping if you let light, if you look at it with the light shining on it. 
So you always want to make sure there's a bright light shining on your piece so you can see those bubbles popping. And keep your torch moving. Do not burn your resin. So I'm going to stop this video. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. I will put this away and then come back and show you how I store it. Again, this is my art room. My kids don't come in here, so I don't worry about the in and out of it. But you do just want to make sure you don't have dust flying in the air. You don't want the air disrupted too much when you have a wet resin piece in because um, any fluff in the air is going to land in your piece. All right. Thank you for watching. I will be back. I'll show you a little bit more of what I do in the end. Hi guys, it is the next day, so I'm going to uncover this um, resin piece and take off the tape on the back, from the back, and let you see the final results. This is again a drape from work. So it's very convenient, it's very large. I can use it and reuse it as long as I don't have paint on it. I cover it with a bigger canvas on cups here because it stands above the piece so now we'll just take it off and we'll see the final results all right so it is nice and cured I don't see any uh, divots or anything in the resin I don't see any missed spots so I'm gonna take off the back you see <laughs> my poor push pins they get Lots of resin taken uh, stuck to them, but they, it does come off fairly easily. I like working with canvases with this crossbar because it gets, it gets really easy to hold the piece without touching the actual surface. While the resin is cured in 24 hours, I try not to touch it for several days. Um, and I certainly wouldn't pack it up to ship it anywhere for at least a week to just uh, make sure it's hard cured. And in that time where I'm waiting for it to be um, hard cured, I'm going to try to keep it in a warmer spot in my house because the warmth will help it cure a little bit faster. So this is why I was saying don't worry about the drips because these are all attached to the tape. And so that will come off fairly easily. So you'll need your heat gun and patience and you'll pull off those uh, drips and then your piece will be ready. I'm just going to heat up a little bit um, at a time. I don't want to do the full length because this is long and by the time I get to this spot, um, it'll cool down again and become difficult. So I just heat little sections at a time. So once you start getting a little resistance, just pause because you can, if your tape rips, you can get it off. It's just easier if you don't have to get it off. So I just pause and reheat. That's where I'm meeting resistance, so I'm going to slow down. So 
So I did rip that tape there. So you just use your finger to get it started again. In the corners are always a little trickier to make that turn without ripping your tape. So I am making sure that I keep the resin off of the table surface so I don't hold any pressure to it. At this point, if you hold pressure to it, it will dent your resin, which again, you can fix, but it just takes more layers and that just um, takes more time and so your piece won't be finished and then ultimately it does increase the cost of your piece because you're using more resin. And so you just wanna Try to get it done in one layer if you can at all. So you're just gonna, there you go. And then do on, get started on your other side. If it's a little piece like this one, where I don't have enough to get a grip on it, I'm gonna use my blade just to kind of start it, just because I don't wanna pull the resin off of the canvas. And if I pull too much away, it'll take some of the resin off of the canvas also. And then that really does mess up your piece just a little bit. And so it's about fine tuning and making sure that you go very slowly and making sure that you're not disrupting the actual surface of your canvas ever um, because that'll just mess it up and you'll have to redo um, coats again. So I just wanna get this part started with the knife because it's sharper. Stay close to it and it will 
allow you to get the big piece of tape again. So I'm hitting that corner, so I'm gonna blast the corner specifically just because I'm moving tape. Two pieces of tape. Last corner, so I'm gonna blast it, make sure I have enough heat to get rid of both of these pieces of tape here. There we go. And there, you have clean edges, pristine top. I'm going to take you off of the tripod, uh, tripod, sorry, and take you outside and show you this in the sun since it's just peaked out for the morning. All right, I'll be right back. Thanks. Hey guys, this is the final result in the sun. I, as you can see, it is great, a uh, great shine, great reflection. I do love this piece, love brown and blue. Um, this piece is available for purchase should anyone need it. Thank you for watching this long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.